Hello parents, um, I want to share with you how to practice rocket math at home. Um, I want to let you know that every day we practice at school, but we practice for two minutes. Um, you have more time to practice at home, so I will show you the full way to do this and um, the best way to help your child. Um, first of all, what they come home with is a test sheet that looks like this. You will see here their goal in the goal box, and you'll see their score on the test for that day. Okay. Their goal is based on the very first time they take the test on how many numbers they can write in a minute. So if they can write 20 numbers in a minute, they'll be expected to answer 20 problems in a minute. The goal will change um, continuously throughout the year. When a child passes a test level, say their goal is 18, and they pass this level with 24 correct in a minute, their goal will now rise to 24 problems in a minute because we now know they can answer 24 problems accurately in a minute. So do pay um, attention to that, and um, that is the reason why that number may change, okay? And you can keep track of how close they are to their goal by looking at those two numbers. Okay, now what you're going to do at home is you start right here where it says start, and you are going to work your way across the test, down the side of the test, underneath the test, and back up the test. These problems on the outside of the grayish box are the practice problems. The inside is the actual test, okay? So you are doing for practice the outside area, and your goal is to go all the way around the entire box each day. If you do that, they should have no problem passing the test. They are expected to pass the test within six tries. At school, each child has a folder here, and um, on this folder, it has the levels A through Z that they need to uh, pass through, and it has a place for me to keep the score on their first try, second try, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, because the expectation is, is if you practice that much at school and at home, um, you will pass the test within six tries. Each level, A, B, C, D, and so on, introduces two new math problems. So um, you are only, uh, you're doing all the problems you learned before, plus two new math problems. Okay, you'll see maybe uh, 4 plus 2 added and 3 plus 4 added, and then you'll see those numbers inverted 2 plus 4 and 4 plus 3, they'll invert those as well. So that is um, the only difference from level to level. Okay, so when your child comes home, take a look um, at um, their goal and if they're completed. If they have graduated that day, they met their goal and moved up to the next level, I'll staple the next level to you. For example, this child's at G. If you pass G, you'll come home with a letter H stapled to it. So you don't have to practice G anymore. You're ready to practice the new level that night. Okay. Now, it's real important that the child is pointing to the math problem as they go around so they don't lose track because there are a lot of math problems here. So for tracking reasons, please make sure they're always pointing to the problem. Okay. They are going to read you the entire number sentence and say the answer. Okay, they're expected to say it right away. Just like sight words, this is something they're supposed to know just like this. They are supposed to know these facts automatically. They aren't supposed to start counting. There isn't that think time, looking up in the air going, mm. if they do that, you're going to stop them and I'll show you how to correct that and, um, and how to move forward from that. Okay, so as they're going along, they'll say, um, you probably can't see the numbers, but I'm just gonna read through them. Two plus five equals seven. 5 plus 2 equals 7. 2 plus 6 equals 8. 6 plus 2 equals 8. That's about the pace you're looking for, okay? If they're reading through and they say 2 plus 5 equals, you're going to say stop. That's a, considered a hesitation. When they hesitate like that, you're going to say stop. You're going to repeat the problem to them and the answer and tell them to repeat three times. So you'll say 2 plus 5 equals 7. Repeat three times. Um, my son and I will show you how to do that in just a moment. If they're going along, everything's going great, but suddenly they read off a wrong answer. They say four plus two equals nine. You'll do that same correction. You'll say, stop. Four plus two equals six. Repeat three times. They'll do that and they'll continue on. So my son Luke and I will give you a quick run through of what this will look like, okay? Um, you're not setting a timer for this because your goal is simply to go all the way around. Now, it won't take um, that long because you are still using 
about that two second rule for getting an answer. So it's only a couple seconds per problem as we go around. Okay, hon, go ahead and point to the first problem and let's begin. Two plus five equals seven. Five plus two equals seven. Two plus six equals eight. Six plus two equals nine. Stop. Six plus two equals eight. Repeat three times. Six plus two equals eight. Six plus two equals eight. Six plus two equals eight. Two plus two equals four. Four plus two equals eight, not six. One plus nine equals ten. Three plus two equals... Um, three plus two equals five. Repeat three times. Three plus two equals five. Three plus two equals five. Three plus two equals five. Two plus four equals six. Six plus two equals seven. Stop. The problem is two plus six and it equals eight. Two plus six equals eight to repeat three times. Two plus six equals eight. Two plus six equals eight. Two plus six equals eight. Two plus three equals five. Two plus five equals... Um, two plus five equals seven. Repeat three times. Two plus five equals seven. Two plus five equals seven. Two plus five equals seven. Four plus two equals six. And stop. Okay. So I think you get the idea there. I want to point out one other thing that um, he did that um, you need to correct that I did. Um, on one of the problems he had said six plus two equals, um, and he also gave a wrong number, but they need to read the problem exactly as it is. Some kids will take the bottom number and put it on the top. They need to read it exactly as it is. Even though six plus two equals eight and two plus six equals eight, they need to read it exactly as it is. Okay, so you're going to go all the way across, down the side, across the bottom, back up. Now when they're done with that, this is a one minute test. And just to remind you, it says at the top here, one minute test. Now they usually only get through about three to four rows during the class test. So what you can do to practice at home is you can fold the paper over the part that they completed in school that day. And you can set the timer on your phone, microwave, whatever and have them do a one minute test at home now, right after going through all that. So set your timer, say go, and they are just writing the answer in each of these boxes. At the end of the timer, say stop, give them a grade, see how that compares up here to how they did at school and if they're getting closer to the goal. If um, it isn't improving dramatically, you might wanna go all the way around again, because again, we should be getting through this within six tries, okay? Six attempts per level, and then we should be moving on. We go A through Z for addition in first grade, and then we're going to go A through Z for subtraction in first grade. So we have quite a few levels to get through in the um, 36 weeks of school. All right, I hope that helps you. Call with any questions.